Hi everyone, I'm Cece Stein. I'm with Real Malibu 411 and I'm here with Mark Abramson and Suzanne Good. We're here to ask some questions about the update on the Malibu Lagoon restoration project. All right, so let's start with some, excuse my cell phone, we're gonna ask some questions here. Okay, number one is the, is, is Mark coping? How is Mark coping? <laughs> Mark, Mark is doing fine. He might be up to a pack and a half of cigarettes <laughs> a day, but, but doing fine. Okay, great. And how about you, Suzanne? How about you, Suzanne? Um, I'm coping very well, although I do look forward to the gin and tonic at the end of the day. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so how are things going? Are they on schedule? Mark? Things are going really well on the construction side of things. Okay. We're, we're, we've caught up to schedule. We started a little bit later than we thought and uh, proceeding ahead. Okay, great. How about your take? Yeah, I'm really pleased. Um, everything seems to be on schedule, if not ahead of schedule. Ooh. Um, so, uh, as Mark said, we managed to get caught up. We've got all the most of the vegetation off of the site and all the animals safely uh, relocated. We're still monitoring a few duck nests and we're keeping our distance from them until the ducks are out of their eggs and off on their own. Nice. Have any archaeological artifacts been found? No. Further away. No, no artifacts have been found um, that would qualify as ancient. We found pellet guns, uh, lots of balls, lots of toys, lots of trash, uh, lots lots of trash, trash. Okay. sleeping bags, clothing, that, people? Lots et cetera. Of trash. Put your trash in a bag and put it away. And we didn't find Andy Lyon's bong, what he said was scary. <laughs> oh, oh, I love that. Okay. Uh, have any gobies been found uh, in remaining pools? Any fatalities? Uh, we found just a few gobies. Um, we're still um, sending the photographs of those to our goby expert. They, not all of them were Tidewater gobies. Maybe less, less than a handful. No fatalities. Okay, great. That's great. How about Mark? What do you have to say on that one? Uh, most, most of the gobies they're finding are right where we put our turbidity curtain, kind of right at the interface with the main lagoon. And again, um, all of them were returned to the main lagoon and just a handful of gobies. Okay. Hardly anything in the back channel whatsoever. Okay, yes, please. Yeah, as, as, we, as we expected, there were few or no gobies in the western channels because that is not their preferred habitat. The gobies prefer the main lagoon, so we were really not surprised that we didn't find many gobies. Okay. Uh, any bird or animal extin extinctions, fatalities, if so, species, and how many? There have been no animal extinctions. There have been um, just a handful of, you know, maybe two or three lizards and a couple of voles that did not make it. Uh, we feel we've been very, very successful in relocating all the animals alive. Okay. Mark? I would concur with that. and. Uh just we'll get to see it in a little bit but you can see my biological monitors are out there i've got pretty much more monitors on site than we have equipment and construction workers on site so we're i can't imagine doing anything more to protect species on site than what we're doing um to the point of being ridiculous at some point okay great okay are there any <clears throat> geolog geologists that have identified what sediment layers that are native natural soils as, a pool, as opposed to the Caltrans deposits. We have okay. cultural resource folks on site who are really uh, attuned to being able to look at historic soils versus fill soils. And um, for the most part, we haven't even seen any old alluvial soils. There was one part where they were digging for the new channel area where they dug down below or at sea level. And um, we hit some old vegetation layers that were presumably historic wetland layers, which are about mm, six feet in some spots, maybe seven feet in some spots below what's the existing wetland area. And uh, and when you when they hit that spot, you can see kind of the new, you can see the old gravel and the old cobbles from the stream bed, and, and you can see the change in the soil color. So there's, there's a good, bit of fill on site we've pulled a good bit of trash and other part of other things out of that out of that fill um, and we've barely hit what we think is the old wetland habitat or the old wetland area that we're trying to recoup to 
Beachgoers, Malibu's not your dump. You need to take your trash with you, period. End of story. Suzanne, um, please elaborate. I would add that um, our archaeologist, who's very experienced in monitoring other wetland sites, was shocked when looking at the sediment deposits that have been deposited um, in the last 30 years to see nothing in them, no shells, no worms, no life whatsoever. She said this was incredibly um, devoid of life, the mud that we have taken out, wow. and that's exactly what we've been saying all along. There was nothing living in that mud. Okay, all right. Um, have any foreign materials, such as concrete, logs, building materials, or other materials been identified from the dump area? If so, what? Lots of telephone poles and concrete chunks, asphalt chunks, and these are only in the areas where we've been working. When we get to some of the other bigger fill areas, we're expecting even worse, uh, worse debris than we found currently. Okay, Suzanne? Yeah, I, I'd say we've seen at least a dozen telephone poles. We have a small mountain of huge chunks of concrete um, and asphalt, as Mark said. Okay. Uh, what is the estimated thickness of the Caltrans fill over how much area was the fill distributed? Estimated cubic yards? I have no idea, but... That's a Steve question yeah. right there. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay. But, I mean, so far, everything that we're digging into has been fill soil. So fill soil, okay. It, it's significant, okay. right? Yeah, what, what we're doing now is undestroying the lagoon. Okay. that was destroyed yeah. by all of the fill that was brought in and smothered la the lagoon over decades. We're now removing all of that and unearthing the lagoon that was there before. Okay, that's what we like to hear. Uh, is the berm holding up, uh, is the berm holding up now that the sand berm is closing up again? Uh, yeah, we'll show you the berm. You'll see it. It'll, that's the best way to judge it. You'll okay. come look at it and okay. tell me. Yeah, I would say that thing is solid. It's 95% compacted. Okay, and great. And there's big machines going over it, so it's it's getting yeah, more drive, compacted all the time. Okay, we drive great. Cars and stuff. Are any evidence or tests done for the septic leaching, right, from the uh, from the colony? Um, currently, we're not doing any water quality testing okay, on site okay. until we get the the watering plant hooked right. up. Um, I can tell you, there's a a good inflow of groundwater when they hit about the four foot to five foot elevation. Okay. Um, that's all remaining in our in our storage area in our back channels okay. until uh, we we hook up the dewatering plant probably later this week. Suzanne, so Same. I, I agree. Uh, how many nests still have chicks and when are they estimated to fly the coop? Okay. I think we have six or seven duck nests right now. None of them has chicks, they're all eggs. Okay. And um, essentially and once, nests. and the, oh, a Phoebe, we have one Phoebe nest that has young in it that are probably a couple weeks away from being fledged. Okay. Um, once that Phoebe is gone, then we'll just remove the nesting site, which is the bridge. Um, we have about a half a dozen duck nests that all have eggs. As soon as they hatch, pretty much the ducks, after a few days, they'll start moving out, and then we'll be able to uh, remove the fill that they're on. Any vandalism, any threats um, to, to workers? We've had, not really. We've had a few people try to sneak in over the berm. Right. A few people try to sneak in over the fences. We right. have a lot of security on site. Right. Um, we've had a couple areas where they've pushed down parts of the fence, but. For the most part, it's been it's been fairly peaceful mild, right? and mild. Okay. okay, great, Suzanne. Yeah, we do have a photograph of one of the prominent project opponents um, walking through the snowy plover exclosure, trying to get onto the site. <laughs> I love that. Just one. Are protesters still making a presence? Um, I haven't seen any protesters out on the sidewalk in quite a few days. We do occasionally see um, photographers on the beach and on the PCH bridge. I don't know what you would hope to try to stop at this point in the project. And when we go out there, I think you'll see the project is f far progressed. Right. And that stopping it at this point would be a worse, would be, you know, a major environmental issue from upcoming and what we're hoping to do um, than, than not. So. I don't know what, yeah. why you would protest at this right. point. Right. Has anyone identified the surfer that breached the lagoon? 
And are we pretty sure that there was a surfer that breached the lagoon? We're not sure if there was a surfer that breached the lagoon or if it was done naturally through the high tides and the high surf. Okay. Um, but nobody's been identified for breaching the lagoon. Okay. Suzanne? No, we have no idea how the lagoon breached. Um, State Parks has done an investigation. The Coastal Commission has done an investigation. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has done an investigation. Uh, none of these investigations has found any evidence one way or the other what happened to the breach. Okay. How many trucks an hour have been leaving the project site? Today is pretty much the first time we've had trucks really leaving the site, maybe a couple times uh, uh, before, but I would say one an hour, and that's been f maybe five trucks today so far. Yeah, that's my recollection too. Okay. Has it caused any congestion? Say that. That was my next question. Uh, okay. Ha has has this affected uh, the, the traffic on PCH at all? Not to my knowledge. None whatsoever. Okay. Uh, has PCH, well, we, we just, first I said subject, have Malibu businesses been affected by this? I can tell you the construction workers here, the 40 or 50 people that are on site, and my, all my biological monitors all eat at local Malibu and shops. So hopefully they're getting a little extra business. Yeah. yeah. I've bought a lot more lunches here than I have in the past. <laughs> That's great to know. Uh, has the surf been destroyed yet? Uh, there's still people using the surf, so I would say no and uh, no. Okay. No. No. Okay. Okay, this is the best closing question ever, okay? Are you, Mark Abramson, and you, Suzanne Good, and everyone involved in the project, shopping around for a Lamborghini? Uh, <laughs> um, no, definitely not shopping around for a Lamborghini. I wouldn't probably buy a Lamborghini anyway, but uh, I'm not even shopping around for a better pickup truck, so okay. no. I'm just trying to keep my 1984 Volkswagen <laughs> on the road. And amen to my 96 BMW Z3. <laughs>